Hello, I'm John Voigt, and for the next half hour, I invite you to join me as I present a portrait, albeit a brief portrait, of one of the greatest religious leaders of all time. is a kinder and gentler place because of a sainted man whose immense spirituality and holiness projected for everyone, for you and me, a life filled with happiness and the performance of good deeds. This special man I speak of is Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson, and we are currently in the midst of celebrating a half century of the Rebbe's continued leadership and inspiration. The Rebbe's message that this world is God's beautiful garden, not a jungle. And God gives each and every one of us the opportunity to be a gardener in his beautiful garden. Based on the 300-year-old Hasidic teachings and philosophy of the Baal Shem Tov, the Rebbe brought the message of godliness and humanity to the world. The Rebbe was very special, he was unique, because he, who was, I think, the loneliest leader in the Hasidic world today, wanted one thing, to prevent any Jew from feeling lonely. And that was, by the way, Hasidism from the very beginning. It was a remedy against loneliness. A Jew should not feel lonely. That's the strength that Rebbe gives us. And that Rebbe taught us happiness. We are Hasidim. Happiness, optimism. This is the way we proceed putting forth the Rebbe's dictates to change the world and make it a better place. The Rebbe had eyes that were so telling and so beautiful. He had the most beautiful face and the most beautiful eyes. Still does have the most beautiful face and the most beautiful eyes. And when he looked at you, you could feel all of the energy of the universe in his face and he looked at you and he made you feel good. Every year, thousands traveled to 770, the Bard World Headquarters in Brooklyn, New York, for his inspiration, his blessing, and his advice. That's right, you know, I said to people that this was a wonderful year, Baruch Hashem, but this was our greatest accomplishment of 1988. To be elected a senator was nice, but this was the best. But don't be such a with you. <laughs> I have the fondest and most uh, precious memories of the occasions when I was fortunate enough to be in the presence of the Rebbe, to listen to him uh, teach, uh, to ask his counsel to benefit from uh, his guidance and inspiration. Thank you, I appreciate that. These are, these are serious times in Washington, and I, for me, uh, Baruch Hashem, I have an opportunity to try to uh, be of service, so your bracha means a lot to me. For he attracted so many people from all the horizons, believers, non-believers, rich, poor, uh, anyone, scientists, anyone who was there used to see it, them standing in line, in the hundreds, waiting to be received by the Rebbe at night, because he wanted to see them. He wanted everybody to feel that he or she is a full-fledged member of this extraordinary, singular people, our people. For me, as, as a mother, he, on hearing that my child had leukemia, probably is the worst and the most frightening news that you could ever get about your child. And I think I got a coldness in me that didn't go away for a very long time. The Rebbe advised her to go ahead with a bone marrow transplant and assured her that the results would be positive. 
with the Rebbe's concerns and prayers, along with those of Benjamin's parents, today he enjoys life as a healthy, active 15-year-old teenager. During the time after he came home, he was in the hospital for four months, um, the Rebbe's office actually called me at my house to find out how was our Benjamin doing. For the Rebbe, who has so many global issues and so many things that he deals with, for him to have personally called my house and us to find out how our Benjamin was doing is just a testament to the most wonderful man and spiritual leader who has so many global and amazing issues going on and he still has time for each individual person. The Rebbe's leadership is encapsulated by his message and his example of goodness and kindness. Each Sunday, the Rebbe would receive thousands of men, women, and children from all walks of life, regardless of race, color, or creed, and among them were world leaders, children, scholars, simple folks, students, and laymen. To each of them, the Rebbe gave a dollar bill, making them his partner to give it to the charity of their choice. And I was fortunate enough to go to the Rebbe to New York on a number of occasions, actually, for dollars when the Rebbe would stand. We would stand for a few hours waiting to get our turn in line, but the Rebbe would stand all day and all night. And that few moments when he looked into your eyes, there was nobody else in the world except the Rebbe and yourself. And that's just, it's an unbelievable, it's an unbelievable feeling. Why the dollar? The Rebbe explained his custom by quoting his father-in-law, Rabbi Yosef Yitzhak of Lubavitch, who would often say, when two people meet, something good should result for a third. The Rebbe wished to elevate each of the thousands of encounters of the day to something more than just a meeting of two individuals. He wanted that each should involve the performance of a mitzvah, a good deed, particularly a mitzvah that also benefits another individual. When the Rebbe, the seventh in the Chabad dynasty, took over the spiritual reins from his revered father-in-law, the world was still reeling from the effects of the Holocaust. I was a child. My parents were separated throughout the whole war. One didn't know whether the other one was alive. I was with my mother. And um, by the grace of God, we escaped the camps. We were actually in a truck caravan one time that was on its way to Auschwitz. And if I could draw, I could draw you a picture of that whole scene. And it stopped along some point, and there were German soldiers marching on the sides of the trucks and the dogs and the boots and the, just as you see it in the movies. And by then, I think the people knew where they were going and what was going on. And the thing to try to do was to be the last one on the truck and the first one off to be towards the end of the truck, which is what my, where my mother and I were. And she threw me off the truck and jumped off the truck. And we literally ran to the side where there was like the open road, there was an open field and then forest. And nobody shot, nobody came after us, nothing. So it's, I think anybody that survived, it was a miracle story. The Rebbe was able to lift the generation after the Holocaust. To lift the generation who was so broken. To lift the generation who felt they were living in a perpetual nightmare. To give them the optimism. To give them the strength. To give them the conviction. I went to Chabad one time through my husband. And it was like... It was like I had been a fish out of water and somebody put me back in the water. It just, it was right, it was warm, and it fit. The Rebbe strove to realize Maimonides' vision of a world free of death and destruction. 
toward his goal, the Rebbe took a generation from the ashes of the Holocaust and inspired the rebuilding of Jewish life to the great crescendo it has reached today. For our son's bar mitzvah, he wanted to give a Torah to our, the Chabad where we daven. And on that Torah, we wrote an inscription. And the inscription says, for the light that the Rebbe kindled in our lives, and this light, this flame, has engulfed us, has engulfed our home, has engulfed our business, having, has engulfed our family, and has made us so strong and so happy. We're growing up in a world where people look for heroes to attach themselves to. A lot of people might look at movie stars that are out there or political characters, but I'm very grateful that the hero in my children's life is the Rebbe. Because I feel from the Rebbe they can emanate a lot of his teachings, a lot of his ideas and the values. We have a big Shabbos dinner, uh, and we do all the things that Jewish families do, and it's been wonderful. When you have a, a week chock full of doing what we do, and Friday night, you really rush into Shabbos. It's the most amazing thing. The cook isn't coming tonight. 16 people? It's a time that you have to be ready, and you rush into this time and then it's just like an abyss. It's just an amazing day of being with your family and davening and thinking and reading and sleeping and doing everything that's wonderful. And then Shabbos is over and you're out like a bullet into the world again. So it's really a wonderful, a wonderful way to live. I came into contact with the Hechts, who are emissaries of the Rebbe. They, just like so many other people in town that have been taught by the Rebbe, you know, how to reach out to people, how to ignite the spark in every Jew that exists. And, uh, my grandmother used to drag me to their house, and I would just think, oh, what a joke this is. Oh, my goodness, religious people, rabbis. Okay, fine, I'll go. And, and little by little, it's, it's something that you are drawn to, and it's, it's, it's like a, a mesmerizing thing. You're intrigued by it. You want to know more. And, and I was completely immersed in a secular life. I was always impressed by the tolerance and openness of the Rebbe and the Lubavitch movement not to point to what someone was not doing that was a mitzvah, that was a good deed, but to praise that person for the good deed, the mitzvah that they were about to do. For me, Chabad was the only group that was willing to reach out and say, you know, whatever you're doing, it's fine, it's great. Never making a person feel small, never making a person feel like they're not doing enough, always encouraging them to do more. The Rebbe stressed the importance of practical mitzvahs, the placing of tefillin as a personal connection with God by binding one's arm, heart, and mind. The affixing and the kissing of the mezuzah to recall God's eternal covenant with Israel. The 
giving of charity. So those less fortunate can experience the common bond of God's love for all people. Those who are blessed with the will to give. God bless you. And those who have the humility to accept. The Rebbe concerned himself with the most minute detail of each and every person. And yet he had the scope and vision to initiate and direct a global organization. Left a little, that's it, beautiful. Four, you're on. Four, you're on. The Rebbe was both a proponent of the traditions and practices of ancient Israel and a strong advocate of today's modern technology. The website, askmoses.com, has been established for an immediate response to all questions regarding Jewish customs and traditions. With over 10 million copies, Fabrengen is a publication that brings awareness of the Jewish experience to an entire generation. Rebbe, at the age of 92, would stand for as long as eight hours without interruption to receive his visitors. Yet in the few seconds that he or she was with the Rebbe, each person felt that the Rebbe was there only for them. It was as though he or she were the only visitor of the day. Once an elderly woman could not contain herself and burst out, Rebbe, how do you do it? How is it that you do not tire? The Rebbe smiled and replied, every soul is a diamond. Can one grow tired of counting diamonds? So it's always been interesting to me that the Rebbe didn't have any children. And I guess for me, the thing is that we were all the Rebbe's children. And my child especially was the Rebbe's child. I remember walking up to him and thinking about all the things that I really wanted to tell him. And uh, surely there was brochures that I wanted for the health of my family and my business should get bigger and, and all these things that we all think about that uh, when we talk to somebody uh, like the Rebbe that, uh, that we want and we want him to help us and bless us. And I remember looking into the Rebbe's eyes, these baby blue amazing eyes, and everything that I had thought about just went away. I didn't have any thoughts. I didn't have anything I wanted to tell him. I didn't have any wishes that I wanted. I just knew that being in his presence had touched my soul so dramatically that I was just in awe of it. And this has gone on for many, many years. This year marks the 50th anniversary of the continued leadership of the Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rabbi Menachem Mendel Schneerson. The Rebbe's message, his promise, and his dream live on. Look around. You can count more than 2,500 Chabad Lubavitch institutions and centers established around the globe. Emphasizing his love for Israel, the Rebbe urged the establishment of Far Chabad on the outskirts of Tel Aviv. You can marvel at the unending list of educational, charitable, social, and religious programs inaugurated around the world.
all these gentlemen, what they represent, are the people of the Chabad House. These are people who have definitely stepped forward tonight to say thank you to the Chabad House for what the Chabad House has done for them. The Rebbe devoted his life to our good deeds. And through our good deeds, the Rebbe lives on. You can study the more than 200 volumes of the Rebbe's published works. In 1994, the world lost the Rebbe's physical presence, but the Rebbe's continued leadership inspired his disciples to establish and build communities across the globe, more now than ever before. I just had the occasion to go to see the Rebbe in his resting place in Brooklyn a number of months ago. It was the most incredible experience that I have ever had. And along with everybody else who was there, and there were many, many hundreds of people there, I was alone with him, as were the other hundreds of people that were there alone with him, speaking to him, asking him for things, asking him for blessings, asking his advice, asking his for his help. The Rebbe is definitely very, very present in my life all the time. In fact, I think it's, I think it's knowing that and feeling that that gets me through an awful lot of things in life. My daughter was very ill in Israel after giving birth and had many complications of a bleeding disorder and had kidney failure, liver failure, a respiratory failure. And the first thing I did was call Rabbi Keenan on his uh, cell phone. I didn't know where he was. And I said, Rabbi, this is what's happening. Pray to the Rebbe for me. And Rabbi Keenan assured me that I had the best lawyer of anybody in heaven for my, for my daughter. On one Shabbos, she started to get better, and the doctor came and said, I think she's going to make it. And um, I called Rabbi Kunin and said, she's going to make it. And Rabbi Kunin says, I knew she was going to make it. And I really deeply and honestly feel that the Rebbe had a direct hand in this miracle, because this, what happened to my daughter was nothing short than a miracle. For me personally, Rebbe Schneerson has meant tranquility and has helped me through every problem that I've had in my life. I was diagnosed with something very frightening and very life-threatening and I went to the Rebbe's resting place as was in 1996 so it was not when I could go in front of the Rebbe and ask him face to face or reach out my hand and take that dollar from his hand. Um, and I poured out my heart to the Rebbe. And I told him how frightened I was and what was going on. And I came out of there as if someone had lifted physically. If you can just imagine carrying something that weighs a couple hundred pounds and then somebody takes it out of your hands. 
you just feel this total lifting and ease. And I know that it was the Rebbe's blessing that got me through it. Here or not here, the Rebbe has made a difference in our lives. And Metz Hashem, one day we're going to see him, and one day we'll feel him again. We should continue with the inspiration that the Rebbe has left us to go uh, good deed by good deed to the time of uh, universal peace and justice uh, in this world that we all uh, yearn for. The Mashiach is ready to come now. It is only from our part to do something additional in the realm of goodness and kindness. The Rebbe told us Mashiach is coming. Redemption is at hand. It's only up to you and me to increase our deeds of goodness and kindness. And all of a sudden there's a world of happiness, of singing and dancing, a world without hatred, a world without jealousy. The coming of Mashiach. Rebbe's vision of redemption will hopefully soon become a reality as his spiritual presence lives on.